fits without a net. Toxic mimics. A toxic mimic is something that takes the form and perverts the content of something good. Um, so a, a, a pretty straightforward example of a toxic mimic would be, um, would be rape. It takes the form of the general form of lovemaking or sex or however you want to say it, and it turns into something that is its opposite. And um, abusive parenting would be a toxic mimic of, you know, one of the things that parents do is they instruct their children. And much abusiveness is, has as its claim to virtue, the instruction of the child. The, the child did this bad thing, so I'm going to instruct the child not to do that by beating the crap out of the child. And that's a toxic mimic of, of a loving parent um, um, helping the child to understand that this is the behavior that one wants. And we have an entire culture of toxic mimics that um, television or the internet is a toxic mimic of a real functioning community. Um, the entire industrial field and the entire field of study of forestry is a toxic mimic of the, of living in and loving and participating in the processes who are a forest. And I think that this is really important really important for us to understand on, I mean, there are senses in which, yeah, sometimes the justice system works, but sometimes it's a toxic mimic of justice. And I'm not just talking about, about uh, travesties of justice where an innocent person is harmed. I'm also talking about travesties of justice where, where people who do horrible things get by with them. Those are both, and those are enabled by, well, the, the, our relationship to technology is a toxic mimic of our relationships in general. And I've thought about this for decades, um, it's, as I've said, it's horrifying that my fingers touch plastic more than they touch flesh. And how many machines do we have a daily relationship with as opposed to how many wild animals or wild plants do we have daily relationships with? We probably have more relationship with machines than we do with other human beings for that matter. And The bright green environmentalism is a toxic mimic of real environmentalism. It's um, third wave feminism is a toxic mimic of, of real feminism. It's, it doesn't matter. Invading a country to bring freedom and democracy is a toxic mimic of really bringing freedom and democracy to someone. It's You know, Toxic mimic, I haven't really put it in these terms before, but 1984 is about toxic mimics where war is peace, ignorance is strength. The, what department, is it the ministry of love is actually a ministry of torture. And the ministry of truth is about lies. And Abusive relationships are toxic mimics of non-abusive relationships. And I got this term from someone I knew 
15, a friend of mine, 15, 16, 17 years ago. Um, and I have found it one of the most useful terms to understand our entire toxic culture, which, you know, a lot of this is not just, oh, it's bad. It's some of it is actually, it must be functionally bad because we've talked before, for example, about Dunbar's number, which is the largest number of people you can have in a group where everybody still has face-to-face -face interactions and the largest number in a group where you can still have egalitarian rulemaking procedures. And that's like 120 or 150 people or 100 people somewhere in there. And when you get beyond that, your egalitarianism is going to be, will necessarily be a toxic mimic of egalitarianism. And so it's not just, oh, here's another great example of toxic mimic is this does, hasn't happened recently, I guess, because they gave up on me. But for many years from say 2001 to 2008, I used to get a lot of Buddhists really mad at me because they would say, you know, you care a lot about the salmon, but what you need to do is to practice non-attachment. You need to learn to recognize that the salmon are the movement of God's eyebrows and you need to not be attached as to whether they continue or not. And that always made me really angry and it still makes me angry, but I couldn't articulate why for many years. And then I realized that many of the same people were arguing that we should live very simply and they would get mad at me because I drive a car. And then I realized, no, that what non-attachment is supposed to mean is I drive a car because I live someplace without public transport, but I am not attached to car ownership and car culture. And when car culture goes, I will be delighted. That's what we're supposed to be not attached to. It's not that we're supposed to be not attached to salmon who are fundamental to the health of forests and who are wonderful beings on their own right. It's not, yes, I need to be not attached to my own life because I will die. And yeah, that doesn't mean I'm not going to fight if somebody tries to kill me, but it's a toxic mimic of that acceptance to say, as many people do, oh, we just have to recognize this culture is going to kill the planet and just go ahead and accept that. And the big difference is I need to be accepting of my own mortality, but that doesn't mean I need to be accepting of the murder of everyone and everything I hold dear. And the point here is not attachment. The point here is that one of the most important things I think we need to do is to examine everything in our life and find out what things, what relationships, what, what are toxic mimics and what are real. And, or I should turn that around and say, what in our life is real and what in our life is a toxic mimic of something real.